Welcome to Electro Online. Here's part two of our problem we started in the previous video. And so far, these were the results. We found current one, which was basically the current of our current supply. We found current in mesh two, both expressed in magnitude and phase angle and real and imaginary parts. And then we had the voltage across the capacitor, across the inductor, and across the resistor. Now we need to note that these voltages are actually voltage drops. So this is the voltage drop across the resistor going around the mesh in the direction indicated right here. So that's a voltage drop. So I might as well indicate that. That would be from a plus to a minus here. Here, based upon the direction of I2, that would be voltage drop across the capacitor going from left to right. That would be from plus to minus. And then here, this would be a voltage drop relative to I2 and then as far as the inductor is concerned, we need to be a little bit careful. Here notice that the voltage across the inductor has a negative value. But since that's presumed to be a drop, a negative drop is, is actually a rise. So when we go across the inductor in this direction, according to mesh two, from here to here, we have a voltage rise. That means that this is the negative end and the positive end as indicated by these results. So that's what the signs mean. These are all voltage drops. But of course, a negative voltage drop is actually a voltage rise. And that's important to keep in mind when we work with this and when we try to find the voltage across the current source. So that's what we're going to do next. The voltage across the current source, CS for current source, is going to be equal to the sum of the two voltage drops. So we're going to add this and this together. So that means that is equal to the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the inductor. Now we're talking about the voltage drop across the inductor, which means we're going to need to take the negative sign away because instead of going across the inductor in this direction, we're going to go across the inductor in this direction. So that means that this is equal to 80 with a phase angle of zero degrees plus, not a negative, 105 with a phase angle of 10.89 degrees. So when we add those two voltages together, well, first what we should do is we should write them in, uh, in real and imaginary part formats. So that would be 80 plus J0, and that this would be plus, and here that would be 103.9, and that would be plus a J20. So when we add all that together, this is equal to 183.9 plus J20. And then if we write that in magnitude and phase angle format, we take 183.9, we square that, we add 400 to that, take the square root. Well, let me try that again. I messed something up here. 183.9 squared plus 400 equals, take the square root, that's 100. And 84.98, so that would be 184.98 with a phase angle of, that would be 20 divided by 183.9, take the inverse tangent of that, that would be 6 point, hmm, how about 2, 6.2 degrees, that's good enough, all right. So now we have the voltage across the current supply, the voltage across capacitor, the voltage across inductor, and the voltage across the resistor. Now we're ready to find the power across each of the devices. So let's start with the easy one. We'll take the resistor. So the power across the resistor, and that's the average power, would be one half. Maximum current, that would be four. Maximum voltage, that would be 80. And then times the cosine of the phase angle difference between the current and the voltage, the phase angle for the current is zero, the phase angle for the voltage is zero, so that would be zero minus zero. And then you can see the cosine of zero is this one, and now one times, one half times that, that's two, times that, that would be 160 watts. So that is the power across the resistor. Now is that power consumed, or is that power provided? In this case, that would be power consumed by the resistor because the current goes across the resistor in the same direction as the direction of travel around the mesh, so that would be a power loss. Now the power across the inductor, P sub L is equal to, the power across the inductor would be one half times the maximum current across the inductor, 
that would be I1 minus I2 or I2 minus I1. And where do we have that? Let's see here. Hmm. I guess I had on the previous uh, part of the problem, but not on this problem. So I'll have to get that back. Let's see here. What there was that equal to? It was uh, 10.58, 100.90. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be I1 or I2 minus I1. The difference of the two currents is going to be equal to that. So I needed that because when I go across the inductor, I have the two currents to contend with, so I need the magnitude and uh, the phase angle. That's right. So current would be 10.89 or 10.58 times the voltage across that. Now that we have, that's 105.8 times the cosine of the difference of the phase angles. So that would be the phase angle of the current, which is 100.90, 100.90 minus the phase angle of the voltage, which was 10.89. Uh, that would be 10.89. That's close enough. That's just a slight round off error. But notice 100.9 minus 10.9, essentially, that would be the cosine of 90. And the cosine of 90 is 0. So therefore, this is equal to 0 watts. Because the phase angle difference is such that we have no power loss. And then we need to power across the capacitor, which is equal to the current, that's I2, which is 10.58, times the voltage. The voltage would be 52.92, times the cosine of the current, of, of the phase angle of the current, that would be 79.11, minus the phase angle of the voltage. Now the phase angle of voltage is a minus 10.89. Of course, that's all degrees like this. And notice a minus times a minus is plus. When we add these two together, we get 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 is zero. So again, zero watts. So there's no power loss across the capacitor. And finally, the power across the uh, current supply. That's going to be equal to one half. The current, which would be 4, yes, 4, times the voltage. Now, we got the voltage across the current supply, which was right here. That was 184.98. So that's uh, 184. We might as well round off to 185. And now we need the, the cosine, the cosine of the phase difference. So here we have the current. That would be phase angle of 0 degrees minus the phase angle of the voltage, which is 6.2 degrees. So now we take the cosine of 6.2, 6.2, take the cosine of that, multiply that times 0.5 times 4 times 185, and that gives us 367.8, 367.8 watts. Now, is that a power supplied or power consumed. Now notice that the current I1 is in the same direction as the current and the current source, that this is power supplied. Now when you look at this, you realize, well, wait a minute. We're providing this much power to the circuit via the current supply, and we're only consuming 160 watts via the resistor. The, conductor, the inductor and the capacitor do not consume any power, so where's the other 207.8 watts. Well, maybe some, that has something to do with the, the uh, power. Uh, in this case, it'll be power consumed by the power supply because we have the current in the opposite direction to the polarity of the power supply. So let's go ahead and calculate that. The power by the voltage supply is equal to one half times the current. The current that would be I2, which is 10.58. Multiply it times the maximum voltage, V max, that would be 60, times the cosine of the difference in the phase angles. Now, the phase angle of the current I2 is uh, 79.11, minus the phase angle of the voltage, which is 30. So it would be the, the cosine of 49.11 degrees. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we have uh, 
0.11, take the cosine of that, multiply that times 60, multiply times 10.58, and multiply times 0.5, and that gives me 207.8, and that would be equal to watts. Now, that would be power consumed, or absorbed, as we would call it. I always use the word consume, but a lot of textbooks use the word absorbed. So now you can see that if this much is supplied, and we consume this much by the resistor, we consume this much by the power supply. When we add these two together, this plus this together is 367.8 watts. So the amount of power supplied by the current supply is equal to the power that is absorbed by the resistor and by the power supply combined. And so when we add everything up together, so this is also absorbed, might as well write that down. So you can see that the amount of power provided or supplied is equal to the amount of power absorbed by the two components. And so we probably did this one correctly, and that is how it's done.